Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me at the start of a new campaign in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we're playing as a certain Barry Goldwater. Now, we haven't, we're start, starting off in January. I've done a few focuses, two focuses, just because I've been trying to get the treaty ports back here with Goldwater. Um, I'll let you know how we got here and how we've ended up with 47 Democrat, Democrat senators versus 22 Republicans, 21 center MPPs and eight um, on the right side, but I began with the Goldwater presidency. Barry Goldwater is now on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The senator from Arizona has promised a lot during his election, base uh, holding on to his arc conservative base in the South, and the libertarians of the West are also also appealing to the moderates of the Northeast. But his associations with the likes of Donald Reagan and his voodoo economics and his incendiary anti-F word views have made him many of those in power uneasy. But it's time to get to work for all of America now. Whether that involves working with those that disagree with him in the party to hammer up compromises, or forging his own paths, that's to remain to be seen. Cool, so now, we have the legacy of 64. The fiery spirit of the American dream within the people of the U.S. has been choked in the wake of the corruptive influences and scandals of the White House ever since former President Nixon's actions came to light. Now, it is our duty to not only advance the U.S. past the hurdles we must overcome, but also is our duty to repair the image of the presidency in the modern day. With a new stable administration running the show in Washington, and a whole new figure to take the helm cap captaining the beast, this beacon of li liberty, it's time to cut away at some of the rougher parts of the presidency and make our position whole in these trying times. Our predecessor implemented several disagreeable and disunited policies in his administration, which shall only serve to break apart the American people further. Therefore, if we manage to scale back our forerunners' actions and focus more upon the future, as well as the elections of the upcoming years, we may yet find ourselves called heroes by the American people. Also, with Barry Goldwater, uh, the failure of Bennett to maintain a nationwide campaign in 64 had proved to be to the Democrats, that the boat must be rocked, and President Goldwater will bring a typhoon upon America. The Goldwater campaign promised economic reform and the end of rising extremism in this country, and addressing the failures of the last administration, while Barry himself may have some opinions on how, how to address the growing problems of pollution and unionism. We'll have to access political uh, potential missions, which may range from fulfilling our campaign promises or fighting our personal own wars. High risk, high reward, we can do a green future, which I've heard that the environmental stuff for Barry Goldwater at the time of this recording is bugged, so I'm not really sure if I want to do environmental stuff. I want to do it, but I don't want to do it when it's really bugged. We could chapel collectivism and try to suppress the left. We can fight fascism and suppress the, I guess you could say the right. We have a southern strategy, appeal to the far right NPP, successfully pass Goldwater's new budget through Congress and destroy the Civil Rights Act before the mission completes. Oh. Um, has not completed restoring true justice, and, ooh, and the Copperhead Approach will appeal to the far-right NPP, northern far-right. Uh, let's see, if we take restoring true justice or the end of big government without activating it. Ooh, meeting the demands of this mission will grant us bonuses, failing will hurt us. Um... Because right now, we're doing restoring true justice. We've done the failures of Kennedy, though. Robert Kennedy's efforts to carry on his brother's legacy have failed. His expensive and overburdened programs are dragging the country down into the mire of debt. Law enforcement has suffered from the restraints on their autonomy, and the crime rate shows that the question of civil rights still hangs in the air, poisoning political discourse, and sparking outbursts of violence all across the country. Worst of all is the establishing expectation of the government interfering in the lives of private citizens. We need to deal with this problem Kennedy left behind so we can move on with our own policies. It may have been a dreamer, but the American people have woken up. It's time to move on from his failures and get back to business. In which we did this one too. Failures of Kennedy. Lloyd Benston. Uh, Benston. Did his best to remain calm as the light of the TV camera blasts into his face and the face of Lawrence E. Spivak. In all his years as a congressman, he'd never been invited to meet the press. NBC's all-too-popular program that brought journalists with questions and politicians while well, the answers to the TVs of millions of Americans. Spivak had been going back and forth regarding the presidencies of Kennedy's. Whenever, or why ever, he thought Lloyd knew more than anyone else was a mystery. So, Congressman Benson, he continued, as someone who knew and served with a man, what do you think, who, what do you think was Bobby Kennedy's greatest failing? Lloyd scratched his chin. I don't think he was without his failings. None of us are, I think. He was a dreamer. He brought us all together when no one else could, but he too often failed in making those dreams reality. Do you think his failings had anything to do with his dogged pursuit of civil rights? Lloyd eyed Spivak with caution. Bobby Kennedy was a friend of mine, he said, and I believe that what he believed, that liberty without equality is not liberty at all. He may claim that his pursuit of civil rights alienated some to the stance, but it was not a failing. Well put. Um, cool. Change popular popularity to social democracy? Nice. 
So we're doing restorative justice or restoring justice now. Kennedy's Justice Department under Ramsey Clark has set an abysmal example for law enforcement across the nation. Enforcement of the law is their job. Legislating new laws into existence is for Congress. Attorney General Clark switched these priorities, setting a dangerous precedent for government interference in the affairs of the states. While the cities slowly degraded into crime-filled slums, Kennedy's men dithered and refused to take responsibility for common criminals instead. They had Director Hoover and the FBI specifically target those who disapproved of their radical policies, while completely neglecting the numerous dissidents among their own party. It's time to start looking for crime where we want to find it, and start actually looking where it actually is. I'll allow the p police to work unhindered. Artists look a little better in uh, no southern states, but look a little worse in northern states. Huh. The Department of Justice shall enforce the law, not change it. Probably do that one. Kick out the activists. The Justice Department has spent its tenure under Kennedy doing its best to abuse its power, frame honest Americans as fascist fifth columnists, and generally slow the good name of the Justice Department. They've been preoccupied with defending their absurd busing regulations from the Supreme Court, prying into the affairs of good, honest men like Agnew and Boykin, and indulging themselves in pursuing evidence for convictions they've already made. Attorney General Clark's efforts at expanding his authority were a flagrant waste of department resources and taxpayer money, giving us an agency with too many people and more funding than it needed to do its job. Fortunately, it should be simple to start making cuts. Go after the more activist members who are overreaching their authority. There are plenty of those still around. Now, I'll be honest here, I'm not exactly sure which direction I want to take with Goldwater, because he's, he's he's got some options here, because we have the American nature, which is environment and stuff, and focus on socialists, and then target the Yaquis, which I'm not sure which one we want to do, but I have a feeling which way we're going to go already. We have Reaganomics, and, or the Bennett Plan. So, we'll have to make a decision. And we also have austerity and finance, abundance and defense, Rumsfeld plans versus McNamara's plan. So, and then we also can just fight the unions, which I've done before, off, sc off screen in my own time to get like yucky and stuff. Go with what we have. It's not enough. Just destroy unions forever. Uh, but like I said earlier, how we got here, um, let's see, we have start with Nixon. Then I screwed up as Nixon. Not, honestly, I didn't screw up that hard as Nixon. So, like, we still lost. Well, we. Well, it took forever in Africa. Let's see, we have the mandates here. We still won. Uh, we had RFK. I made him as liberal as possible, but I made RFK fail literally everything. He couldn't pass any sort of civil rights. Uh, where do we have civil rights here? Uh, engines of war. Yeah, we have engines of war still at the ready. Uh, what? I don't think we even have civil rights here at all. I think I vetoed civil rights, first of all. We have extremely high open unity. Um, and like I said earlier, we're still trying to get the treaty ports back, which was the last thing I did as RFK. Literally, like... During inauguration day, like I was finishing up the focus, so um, we're still trying to get the treaty ports back. Screwed up as RFK super badly, super liberal, didn't get anything accomplished though. And then we are Barry Goldwater, and that's how come we got all these senators for ourselves. It's pretty nice. All right, so we're not gonna look at this one. So the political landscape. Also, the Supreme Court, if we need it, is six conservatives, three liberals, 69 RDs. Nice, very nice. So Southern strategy, appeal to the Southern far right. Successfully passed the new budget through Congress. The new budget and destroy the Civil Rights Act, which we might do. And this one, oh, we need to secure the Civil Rights Act before the mission completes. Oh, so we don't need to choose. Oh, crap. Do we want to do the copyright strategy and get the northern far right with us? Or do we want the southern far right with us? Well, realistically, I don't really care for either one. Even though it looks like the, the northern one might be better to do. Let's take a look. Just because this is my first campaign is Goldwater. I'll be honest, I'm going to play Goldwater like at least two to three times. Like I said, what I'm going to do is the same thing with uh, George Wallace. It just takes so long to get to Goldwater. Oh, but let me question. He went too far. The Civil Rights Act has been passed. Withdraw federal protections. Ooh. Mm, rally the South. The death of the Civil Rights Act will decrease the status of civil rights. Um, he did what he must. Pay lip service. Remove integrated... <laughs> military. Calm Russell. Do it quietly. The Civil Rights Act secured. We can't turn our backs now. Well, at the very least, we can always do this one. He went too far. It's been passed. Okay, so with our Senate currently, with 47 Democrats, I'm going to assume that most of them are not going to go for it. We do have a lot of Sena center Senators. <sighs> Honestly, I kind of want the Northern NPP. Then again, Civil Rights... At a federal level, will Barry Goldwater want the Civil Rights Act passed? Southern far right. I mean, if we just come up here again, we don't have that many. We, well, we have, you know, t four. Five. We have Strom Thurmond, which is going to be there probably t until 2003. And up here, we have the center as well, like Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio, and Wisconsin. Wisconsin, are you okay? You can't. Wisconsin doesn't exist, apparently. 
All right, whatever. Um, yeah. Well, we don't have to take these. Destroy the silver attack. You know what? Set them far right. Hmm. The end of big government. Ooh. I don't want to. I don't want to have to choose these two. Destroy the silver attack before the mission completes. Successfully return to the gold standard. Oh, actually, that's kind of cool. I like that one. The return to the gold standard and secure the silver attack before the mission completes. Oh no, I apologize for this because I just don't know. Because silver gold, with gold water, build up the gold reserve. So you need to do that one. And if we go with the northern side. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. Well, let's go with Reaganomics. That seems kind of crazy. It's conservative finance. So let's not do this one for gold standard. Even though I kind of want to do that one. We're going to southern strategy for now. Maybe. Uh, or we could go the other way. I apologize, man. I apologize. Whew. Yeah, I mean, you have you have so many standards on the... Right, and technically West Virginia is part of the South-ish, sort of. Focus on the South, screw it. Southern strategy. Yeah. We're gonna go with that one. My apologies for taking so long. But yeah, we want to finish this Axe stuff up as fast as possible. While we're still trying to get the other stuff too, so. My apologies. But like like I said, I, I definitely want to do Berry Gold Water a few different times. I'm just waiting for Toolbox here to come out, which is never going to come out. Also, we have... We're looking really good. With RFK, like, I went extreme in terms of like getting rid of eliminating poverty so we're currently at 15 to 25 percent poverty rate but restoring true justice bill Sachs, we've been expecting this yet to come for a long time attorney general of the u.s was no small appointment and he would have to make the most out of it if he were to achieve a justice in, in america president goldwater promoted him from deputy attorney general to the big chair and now standing in front of a white house press corps he had to reassure himself he was right for the job an NBC reporter was the first to ask a question. Once introductions and general plans have been laid out, Mr. Saxby, you claim that the Justice Department overreached its peer review during the administration of the RFK? Could you elaborate on that? Bell looked at the reporter in the eye. The administration of Bobby Kennedy saw massive judicial overreach, and the Justice Department more interested in writing legislation than enforcing and interpreting the law. The legal precedents set forth were an overreach of power, and I will seek to restore the Justice Department back to its original tasks. Darn right. Unshackle the police. When it comes to law enforcement, the FBI is the gold standard. Every officer on the streets, from rookie beat cops to precinct captains and small town sheriffs, should see them as an example of how to do their job. We must get Hoover to lead the way and get the police to stop chasing RFK's political enemies and start cracking down on real criminals again. Furthermore, we need to restore the confidence of the police in the U.S. That means stop harassing cops over minor breaches in protocol, restoring funding to the state and local forces, and most importantly, have their back against the socialists that want them prosecuted for doing their job. Every officer on the street should know that his actions to protect the public are backed up by the U.S. government. Only then can he keep our nation safe. If you want to read about the Treaty Ports Return, please go ahead. Look at that. Hawaii becomes a demilitarized zone. You know what? That's okay with us. We'll gain a lot of support over our great victory. You know what? I don't want them demilitarized. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, uh, we're, still, we're still, like, negotiating for it anyway, so it's fine with us. Well, would you look at that? We actually got the ports back already. First, this is my first drive, too. Didn't have to reload the save yet. Keep making them stuff. And just in case, let's save together because we might need to come back to the save in the future. And it takes forever to load the menu just to save the game. That sucks. Oh, well. All right, not bad. And let's keep going. Keep going. Because we got we got to act. Because I don't want the unity of the RDs to collapse just yet. So we'll get there eventually. Political landscape's looking pretty good. I mm, I want to save my PP. I do want to increase RD unity, but they're working well already. So one time, but uh, one more proposition. Uh, oh, this is part the, about the poor. So if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Kick out the activists. They don't need to be here. Cleanse the Justice Department. Fixing the problems in the Justice Department isn't a matter of just bringing in a new Attorney General and replacing a few important officials. Even lower-level bureaucrats still have a huge effect on the way the de Department operates, and most of them still remember the Kennedy D days. We can't just wait around and hope they'll get with the program. There are too many of them that still believe in Kennedy's crusade for big government, leading to a clash of ideals, internal friction, and discontent. To figure out who these individuals are, we should turn to J. Edgar Hoover. Hoover didn't get along with Kennedy, and he knows where the bodies are buried. We can trust, and we know who we can trust and who we can. We can promise him a longer leash in exchange for access to some of his files on Justice Department officials. It's a win for us both. Nice. Copyright approach, not this time. And I do want to say, PP, we might need it later, but round two. 
Um, okay, not days after the riotous celebrations in L.A. and San Francisco, the foreign minister returned to Washington, D.C. under President Goldwater's personal invitation. The visit's official intent was a tour around the American capital, a show of goodwill capitalizing on the momentum of the now sh name handover success. Unofficially, well, the old man had his suspicions. He thought the monk confirmed when he entered the Oval Office and saw the president, tr back turned, inspecting a large canvas of the Hawaii. The minister drew in a sharp breath as he took a seat, sealing himself for the last conversation he ever wished to confront in his career. I trust the accommodations here are to your liking, President Goldwater asked without glancing back. The foreign minister grunted an assent. Not exactly proper decorum, but he figured the silence meant the president didn't really care. Good. Uh, le leather shoes clacked with polished l linoleum. As the president shuffled back to the Resolute desk, pulling several folders out of its cabinet, he spread the stack across the surface like a dealer with a stack of cards. Each folder bore a proposal, and red capital letters across the tab. Wouldn't want to keep you from seeing the sight, so I'll keep this brief. We've got some ideas for your government's consideration. We'll discuss these more later during your stay. As quickly as he arrived, the minister left the office, escorted by his assigned guard. When he eventually inspected the president's ideas in printed form, he was drawn to the most to measure negotiations... Exchanging the Panama Canal Zone? Unconditional retrocession of the Hawaiian Islands to the right, rightful government. Which is one I always do just because it it just works. Now, we won't, we might not be able to get that depending on how successful or how unsuccessful we are in negotiations. And I just realized I read this one before, but I thought it said very gold water, so I thought it was a little different. But, yeah. Lose all that political power, please. Because that's fine with us for now. Cleanse the Justice Department, man. The end of big government. Runaway spending unwarranted meddling in the lives of private citizens is a hallmark of previous administration. Trying to give someone a step up to a better life typically means that they latch onto that step and refuse to ever leave. To encourage Americans to start helping themselves, we need to stop taxing them so heavily and remind them that they are the best suited to spending their own money, not the federal government. The American taxpayer should only... Uh, <clears throat> should only be funding necessary government functions, not paying for the wasteful projects of out-of-touch politicians. The solution to losing, losing money has never been to start spending more. An obstacle? I'll be wondering about this, please go right ahead. Withdraws, failed to reach a status on compromise. Ah, uh, this is fine, yeah. They could still reject us, though. Which would suck. But America's got nice, nice infrastructure. Oh, we can build a nuclear reactor in Texas? Yeah, screw it, we will. And Vermont? Vermont's a very weird state. Cleansing the Justice Department. Today, hundreds of government employees in the Justice Department were dismissed, fired, or otherwise removed from the positions of power. Well, this is typically expected from the coming of a new president. A purge of the scales nearly unprecedented. President RFK oversaw a complete change in the direction of the Justice Department, pushing in a very progressive direction, appointing many legal activists and liberal lawyers. Many more were conservative politicians and lawyers criticized this new direction as political overreach, and that the new Justice Department was more interested in writing legislation than interpreting the true word of the law. The replacements for these lawyers, politicians, and justices are now being appointed, and it appears that they are cut from a much more conservative crop than their predecessors. President Barry Goldwater has said that they will be more true to the law than their political desires, but many experts are worried that such a conservative Justice Department makes it back civil progress for many years. Only time will tell. New president, new government. What's new? Makes sense to us. And Barry Goldwater is at 47%. Hopefully he can hold it and handshake. Do we actually... Did I get this on the first try? I, I literally got this on the first try. Nice. That's awesome. We got the treaty ports back and hopefully Hawaii back on the first try. I don't know why I'm trying to boost up the far right and cutting them down with the southern strategy. It doesn't make any sense for us, but whatever. Nice. Current manpower post 150. If you want to read this, please go right ahead. Yeah, seriously, this is literally my first try uh, getting the treaty ports back for this campaign specifically. So, peace in our time. <laughs> hopefully this cements Barry Goldwater's popularity forever. Holy crap. Minus 42 billion in, in deficit. I mean, that's so nice. I forget when the oil crisis hits, though. Hopefully, we can cut down the debt and start working on the GDP just a little bit more. But the end of big government, uh, regulate labor. Ooh, trinket pensions. How about we wait for that? Got the programs. There are two problems with big government. The first of these is that is that excessive regulation discourages free enterprise. When the government imposes strict pollution regulations, it prevents the creation of new American jobs. Building factories becomes more difficult. Oil and coal mining is restricted, unless jobs are created. The second issue with big government is that it allows the lazy to leech off generous government handouts instead of finding a job. The good news is that both these problems can be eliminated without repealing them. It is much simpler to slash funding to Kennedy's programs, a plan which will also have the benefit of reducing your deficit. The end of big government. The administration of RFK saw that saw what many have called an unprecedented expansion of federal powers over states during RFK's presidency. There was a massive increase in government social spending, a large increase in regulation of business and in the economy, as well as a massive increase in the federal budget. Today, the end of the AT era is in sight as the administration of President Goldwater releases the new federal budget plan for the next. If passed, which it likely will be, it will see the massive cuts to what President and Goldwater and many others have been called big government spending.
While the conservatives across the nation are pleased with the plan, they say the center wing of the MPP was not would be an understatement. Many progressives are claiming that the president is trying to undo all the progress achieved during the Kennedy administration, as well as the disenfranchise the poor across America. No matter how abhorrent the CMPP finds a new budget, however, it seems unlikely that they'll be able to stop it in Congress. Left wing whining. And then repudiate labor. Americans are citizens of the nation before they are workers, but labor is trying their best to change that. The entire movement is built on distrust. The worker does not trust the American businessman to give him a fair wage, and the unionists do not trust our government to enforce labor laws. This attitude is dangerous and downright unpatriotic, and needs to be dealt with as soon as possible. Kennedy tried to deal with the labor unions by making concessions, but this only emboldened them to increase their agitation. We'll take the, op the opposite approach. Hinder the unions, the unions at every possible turn until they calm down and stop causing so much trouble. Every American deserves the opportunity for employment and a living wage, but no one deserves special treatment. All right, everyone, so right now we're doing no more free lunches. The first immigrants to this great nation paved the way for us with blood, sweat, and toil. We must do the same if we are to maintain that greatness. Everyone must pull their weight if we are to overcome the fascist threat. We will not use as blunt instruments of state-run fascism to ensure this, but instead use market forces to ensure job creation by American companies. Everyone will receive a fair shot at a good life, and if someone gets left behind, they are the ones to blame. The unions have stopped pushing for special treatment of the members, and the government has ceased propping up ma malingers. -ers. It's time to begin investing into a country the right way, as an added bonus. By choosing the right places to allocate these funds, we should be able to get senators of those areas to favor our legislative agenda and vote in favor of laws they might otherwise not have. Also, I do want to let you know, I wasn't thinking earlier, I don't know why I went with the southern strategy. We'll go with the copyright approach for the northern strategy, because, as we saw earlier... Well, we're going to get civil rights anyways, so we have to go down this way. My fault. My bad. I wasn't thinking early in this episode. My apologies. So, the looming question. We've avoided the civil rights issue as long as we can. The papers speculate on our position on it more than ever. And the press secretary is hounded with questions on how we plan to deal with the question. Kennedy's supporters ask us to preserve his civil rights act, while Senator Richard, uh, Richard Russell has allied, allied with the Dixiecrats, trying to exert enough political clout to force our hand in repealing it. The South is a major source of support for us, and Russell's position as chair of the Senate Committee on Armed Services could be very useful with passing our military reforms. However, the northern population cannot be discounted in the elections. We've won once without courting segregation support. Maybe we can do it again. Either way, it's time to choose a side, which we're not going to choose this way because we don't have the Civil Rights Act passed, right? So, he did what he must. For all of his faults, Kennedy knew that leaving the civil rights issue untouched would tear the nation apart. African American agitation has increased significantly in recent years, and denying them what they have gained would destroy any hope we would have winning their votes. In addition, the North is already upset at our other repeals of Kennedy's policies, refusing to pass a civil rights act would signal complete capitulation to Russell and the Southerners. As for the Southern Wing, they can be appeased. Russell may be an unrepentant segregationist, but not all of his factions are so dedicated, and we can keep him calm with concessions to his home state and promise on other less inflammatory policies. By taking a more neutral stance, we'll keep the country relatively united and minimize any backlash. At least, hopefully. Hopefully. And it's still 68, but uh, we'll see what happens with the development of anti sub helis, which really don't have a role in TNO. I'll be honest, like, just because the Navy doesn't have, have much of a role here either, but hey, look at that. The deficit still minus 42 billion and 70 billion in terms of debt. Nice. He did what he must, my friends. Uh, be operation whatever. Uh, pay lip service. We remove integrated military and re go to in change integration law to integrated military. Hmm, okay. Calm Russell. Let's calm him down first. Kennedy's failure to pass the Civil Rights Act did nothing to allay Southern anxiety. Segregation of Senator Richard Russell knows it's only a matter of time before another Civil Rights Act hits the Senate floor, and he's doing everything in his power to strengthen segregation until then. Rumor has it he's drafting a constitutional amendment that'll ban Congress from interfering in state and domestic institutions, thus making it impossible to advance civil rights at the nation national level. This will tear open America's racial wounds even further, and likely to destroy our party in the process. We need to intervene. President Goldwater will personally meet with him to assure him that we can we come in peace. We're not as radical as old Bobby, and we want to work with the Southern or South to ensure that our future civil rights legislation won't ruffle too many feathers. Our lies, of course, but this will get him to calm down and withdraw his amendment. A temporary fix to a long standing problem. Cool. Um sixty eight. There's not really much we can do here in sixty eight. Which is kinda sucky sucky, but whatever. Um, land auction, we already finished land auction as well. Air auction, we are done with that as well. Naval auction, I guess we're going to go global fleet distribution, probably. Because we can. If someone cut down the debt now, man. He did what he must. Calm Russell, please. Just, just calm him down if he can. We lose some political power, but we already have 300, which is pretty nice, but pay lip service. The activists in the CNPP are so upset about our undoing of Kennedy's policies, complaining that the government doesn't do enough for the common man. A common man should be supporting his government and not the other way around, but that doesn't mean we can't make some purely rhetorical concessions. We'll make a show of reaching out to the NAAS 
and AACP, and similar organizations give some speeches praising the work of both candidates on civil rights and fund studies that help indicate the extent and effects of the problem. This commits us to nothing but makes us look responsive to the demands of the activists. That way we can sh make a show of bipartisanship and claim the moral high ground, which... Moral high ground, that sounds nice and all, but at the end of the day, no one really cares. Colin Russell. Today, after weeks of leading the far right, it's charge and repeal in the Civil Rights Act. A pursuit many consider to be futile after the president refused to give support. Senator Richard Russell of Georgia has announced he will cease his efforts. He went on to explain that after meeting with the president, he has determined that the nation has more pressing concerns at the time, and that he must stop obstructing the day-to-day -day functions of Congress for his own political desires. The rest of the Southern voting group has seen their leaders surrender, and the reaction has been somewhat mixed. Many Southern political well, politicians are outraged, claiming that Russell was bribed or otherwise coerced into giving up. Others have followed suit with Senator Russell, reserving their opinions on civil rights for another time. Regardless, the anti-civil rights movement has been effectively beheaded in Congress, and it appears that Congress will be able to function as normal from here on out. Normalcy at best, and at least, do it quietly. We were elected on a platform of domestic stability, after all. The turmoil of the last decade, Nixon's resignation, the war in South Africa, and of course the many problems caused by Robert Kennedy's time in office. The last thing the American people want is us to bring up more divisive issues and throw the country back into chaos. Discussion of the Civil Rights Act and all the difficult questions around it will be kept to a minimum. The press secretary will explain that we are committed to the status quo and have other issues that are more important to us. Our backroom dealings to keep this issue quiet will remain equally quiet. Russell will remain quiet if he wants his concessions, and the CMPP knows better than to push the issue any further while we're in office. The less said about this civil rights business, the better. A broken arrow, if you wonder about that, please go ahead. Oh boy. Pay lip service. The Civil Rights Act secured it. Our plans seem to have worked. <clears throat> Uh, economic concessions and pork-barreling spending in the South have kept Russell's grumblings to a minimum, and the CMPP is satisfied with their preservation of the status quo. We'll have to make sure racial tensions remain lowered, and have no incidents bring this issue back into the national spotlight. But for now, the horizon looks clear, at least on this front. The media's lost interest in the civil rights mania and is asking about our policy instead of Kennedy's. Tensions in Congress and our own party have been significantly reduced as everyone slowly accepts that, that things aren't changing for a good while. Now we just need to wait for the new reality to sink in. We have equal rights for them. We lose political power, which sucks, though. We can't turn back now. Uh, Senate Flotilla? No. Back off. Um, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Central Siberian Republic, Far Eastern Soviet. Yeah, Central Siberian Republic. That's Tomsk, and they are actually doing relatively okay, so. Cool. Civil Rights Act secured, and back to business. The legacy of Kennedy has been dealt with, and both the party and the people are pleased with their efforts to curb the worst effects of his policies. The law is being forced again, and the government has stopped interfering with the private sphere, and the civil rights issue has been put to rest. Our resources can finally be taken off of these issues and on the more pressing matters facing the nation. Good work, everybody. Let's get back to business. And, of course, I kind of figured the Germans would fold. They almost always fold. Also, like, we're running out of things to build, so I've just been building a lot of forts here in, like, Missouri, Iowa, uh, Arkansas... Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois, so yeah, I don't know, I'm just I'm just making like a four here. And now we lost more political power, gosh darn it. Why does civil rights have to cost political power? Why? Back to business. Now we can actually do stuff up here, finally. So, sit down with Rockefeller. Saying that there is tension between President Goldwater and Vice President Nelson Rockefeller will be saying the sky's blue. While they are both RDs, they couldn't be further apart ideologically. Rockefeller was part of the Northeast, liberal, progressive wing of the party that supported civil rights and government intervention, while Goldwater was a conservative standard bearer who rails against such elitist sentiments as such much as he does against the MPP. But that was before, and, and now this is now, when the RDs need to present a united front. While just a formality, meeting with Rockefeller in the Oval Office with some cameras around can show that the two wings of the party can work together for the better, for a better America. Yeah, this is, this is going very slow compared to how, what I'm used to, but we'll figure that out. A bipartisan cabinet. Um, a conservative cabinet. Ooh, a bipartisan one. A conservative one. Um, do we don't really need to compromise very much. I don't know. A bipartisan one? Do we want a bipartisan one? I kind of want to go with a conservative one just because I want to go with the Bennett plan. But, ooh, alienate southern ones. Ooh. Team of rivals. Ooh, unifying the party. Liberal, conservative, progressive, and libertarian. All of us see at the table and all of their chances to propose solutions let the best ideas win. The elections proved that America was ready to change course from the muddied liberalism of the past 20 years. And instead of pandering to all factions of the RDs and risking confusion and delay when decisions need to be made, a staunch conservative cabinet will be named to ensure that Goldwater's policies will get pushed, put in place. We will not be held back by those who want that want to talk, debate, and compromise. I don't want to go... I mean, obviously, we're going to go with this one for now because we need the gold standard. But... A sound fiscal policy, a conservative finance, a stable economy. Democrats become more popular. 
Um, this seems like we're going more liberal route. I want to go conservative, but we'll go conservative when we do Reaganomics, maybe. Because, oh, this is more liberalized, though. Yeah, more liberalized free market ethos. But Bennett's is kind of a more conservative guy, maybe? I, I never played as Bennett yet, so. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with a liberal one, maybe. Bipartisan cabinet, just because we can. And this is more conservative. Or no, no, this is more liberalized, so. Wait, what am I saying? Oh my goodness, my apologies. Holy crap. This is more liberalized market. So we will go liberalized or liberal market with more bipartisan. We're going to go conservative cabinet then. My bad. My bad. <coughs> the OFN system, the right choice. Huh, the party line Goldwater's way. Well, yeah. Hmm. Oh, what? Oh, we got rid of that stuff on the left side here. That sucks. Also, we did get the act passed, so... Oh, that thing's gone. Last voyage of the SS United States. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. If you want to read about that as well, please go ahead as well. Oh, boy. Yep, that sucks. Stonewall boss, if you want to read about that, please go ahead, too. That one happens every campaign, so I'm not really too worried about it. So we got a beeline down. That's all right. So we shall overcome. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. So, Reaganomics... It's more liberal. Man with a liberalized free market ethos. So, it is what it is. And Bennett is, you know, one of the leading conservative pro business people. So, we're going to go the conservative cabinet then. For now. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I could, I, like earlier in the episode, I was wrong with this side. So, we'll see what happens. But it's speech to a broken nation. America is standing on a precipice. Um, no, that's too fancy a word. America is directionless and, uh, well, that doesn't have the right ring to it. America is a broken nation. Today, we'll begin repairing it. That's it. Let's go with that. The president has already asked the major TV networks for airtime tomorrow evening to give a speech to lay out Goldwater's policies and goals. This speech will also be a perfect opportunity to rally the RDs, the independence of caster ballots for him, and maybe even strip away some of the far-right MPP support. After all, what better way to get America's attention than to address through an Oval Office? Well, let's see. It's no secret that we have our share of disagreements, Mr. Rockefeller. The press won't stop speculating how we'll fall out first. The president shifted in his unfamiliar seat. The Oval Office was far more spacious than the one he'd left on Capitol Hill, and was still an unfamiliar space to him. Across from Vice President Rockefeller adjusted his glasses and spoke. That's what you call me for, here for, isn't it? Uh, to get ahead of any unforeseen issues. I'm sure we won't agree on everything, but everything, but every v president and VP since Eisenhower needed to deal with that. I can't promise you my support on everything, but I can keep silent on matters that are less offensive to the Republican Party, such as your opinion on the unions. The unions have nothing to fear from me, as long as they stay in touch with what's good for the nation. And not just themselves, but let's start with what we can agree on. The Parks Bill, and the agency I propose to deal with environmental issues. You'll have my full support now about the cabinet. Most of these choices, Curtis, is a fine statesman. And McNamara is certainly qualified enough for the job. But Reagan, Reagan concerns me. His policies. What changes would you like to make to the list, Mr. Rockefeller? Excuse me? Reagan is not negotiable. He's critical for securing electoral support from certain special interest groups. And frankly, I'm inclined to agree with his view of government's role. I'm asking if there's any changes you want. Katzenbach for Attorney General? Give Udall a position? I've worked with him before. I could do it again. Goldwater handed the folder of lists to the Vice President. I'm not the firebrand they told you I was, Nelson. We can work together. The start of a good working relationship. A conservative cabinet. Thank you for meeting with me on such short notice, Nelson. Barry Goldwater led his running mate into the presidential suite at the Waldorf Astoria. It was just days after the election, and while the White House was still occupied for a few months yet, it was time to prepare the transition. Of course, Mr. President. Goldwater stopped aside. There was always going to be a tension between Barry Goldwater and Nelson Rockefeller. The former was a leader of the conservative libertarian wing of the R.D. party, while Rockefeller was a standard bearer of the progressive and liberals that called the R.D.'s home. It was a surprise to many when Goldwater asked Rockefeller to be his uh, uh, running mate on the 68 ticket. Many assumed that Goldwater would have sought a more malleable meek man to serve as VP than the uh, very outspoken Rockefeller, who represented the Eastern establishment that Goldwater rallied against during the entire primary season. Someone that could accept being second fiddle, more, little more than someone to bolster the demographics needed to win the election. Of course, Goldwater would never come out to say such a thing publicly, even if it was true. I'm currently assembling my cabinet. I just wanted to let you know who I'm planning on, Goldwater said, handing over a piece of paper with some scrawled handwriting on it. Rockefeller adjusted, adjusted his glasses as he sat on the sofa, looking over the names. As it got further and further down the list, his frown got deeper and deeper. These are all Democrats, Rockefeller said. I don't see a single Republican, or rather, anyone that isn't a conservative. Mr. President, this could divide the party, especially with certain voters, his voters, those that voted for the RDs because Rockefeller was on the ticket. The people have voted for a conservative government, Nelson. Besides, you're here, you're at the table. That should be more than enough to make the liberals happy. 
Rockefeller stood up, handed the piece of paper back. It's your choice, Mr. President. You should have the people that agree with you around the table. His tone of voice made it clear that he wasn't happy about it. He turned on his heel and left the room. Goldwater shrugged his shoulders and returned to work. Moderates would just screw everything else up. Which I guess doesn't make sense. We probably should have chosen the other one, but at the same time, like, we're literally ready for anything. So, and we have enough political power that we can always increase unity, so. Maybe we should have chosen the other one, but I'm not really too concerned about it, I'll be honest with you. But a proper union. Thank you and God bless America. The TV camera shut off and President Goldwater shuffles a speech he just read on his desk. Staffers and cabinet members in the back of the Oval Office were already cheering and applauding. And the Chief of Staff came up to the Resolute desk, a grin on his face. The speech went off without a hitch. Tomorrow. The newspaper will talk about it, and the poll opinions in a couple of weeks will show if it actually did resonate with American people as well as expected, but the time for talking is done. It's time to roll up the sleeves and get to work. We've got a union to save. Uh, Artie's grow more popular and grow a little more unified, so no worries. Concerning reports, uh, I think I've read this one before, so if you don't know about this, please go ahead. A lone wolf can, can be scared off easier than a whole pack. Nice. We'll see what happens. And just, just destroying the debt right now. I love it. I love it so much, man. Destroying the debt. Dots on the screen. If you're wondering about that, please go right ahead, because it happens every campaign. Woodstock, if you're wondering about that, please go right ahead as well. It's unfortunate that the UK, as we just saw, literally just joined the Knights back, but we did get Italy with us, so if you're wondering about that, please go right ahead as well. Yay! I'm not really too worried about these ones. It usually doesn't result in World War III, but you never know. We do have, was it Croatia here? Yeah, Croatia, Al Italy, or Albania. Bulgaria, Romania, so we got these guys in the OFM, which is great. Great, great, great. We didn't get Serbia, but whatever. A proper union. Now we're going to go with revitalize the economy. The economy has been languishing under the worst kinds of abuses for years. With the Oval Office now occupied by fiscal conservative, things are going to get tighter, perhaps for the better, perhaps worse. Budget tight, tight budgeting, tight social programs, tight oversights on federal spending, the full ovar of constrained government finance. Taxes will be flattened, as well monopolies from unions to corporations to the federal government itself. The free market with proper nurturing can finally adjudicate many problems on its own, and as ever, the people most directly concerning are financially capable without federal interference, and if not, it could be that the government has encultured them to be slavish and independent and dependent and deteriorated their self-efficiency. The government has oversought and overwrought its welcome in the affairs of finance that it is at best ill-equipped to manage without trampling the economic rights of American workers and businessmen. Cool. So, American Society United. Good job, Barry Goldwater. Even though the whole thing about getting the ports back was started by RFK, but we don't talk about that here. Cool. And we, we got a beeline down this approach. I mean, I'll be honest, like, we could go down with the environment stuff, but we're probably going to wait, so. A speech of the broken nation. America has been through crisis and chaos for over 20 years now. Since our humiliation at the hands of Japan and Germany, our society has strained and struggled, and our politics have become polarized and acrimonious. Friends have become enemy, enemies, and opponents have become allies in a whirlwind of fear and panic. The forced merger of the old Republican and Democratic parties, and the rise of the National Progressive Party to form the unwanted yet unbreakable two-party system that has been with our nation almost since her birth, has led to ideologues and populists of both extremes screaming at each other on the radio and TV, and drowning out the center in a flood of hate and anger. The moderates of both sides, those that can agree on compromises and get stuff done. There's been no direction, of course, America is a broken nation, but today we begin to repair it. In his first major speech to the American people since his inauguration, President Goldwater identified many of the issues that faced America, including a divided political scene, a stagnating economy, and a listless population. But he also laid out his policy agenda, which is as, as bold and daring as, as any seen or heard since at least the Great Depression. While his details were limited, and Goldwater said that he would find the best course of action through discussion with his cabinet and Congress, he promised that whatever it is, whoever he tries to do, or whatever he tries to do, it'll be for the good of America as a whole. Newspaper editorials and radio commentators, those that often speak of gloom and doom, were much more upbeat the next day. Even Goldwater's opponents said they could respect the earnestness and forthright manner that he spoke, even if they couldn't agree with his prescription on how to cure the USA. But for those that voted for Goldwater in November, it was exactly what they wanted. A promise to solve the many problems that face America, no matter the cost. Thank you and God bless America. And we'll begin with revitalizing the economy immediately, because we have to. We need to. And we're cutting down the budget and spending more so we can get some more political power. Because I honestly do not know how much political power we're going to really need here. So, just do the best we possibly can right now. It's You know what I love? I love cutting down the debt. And now let's all change the toolbox theory if it ever comes out. We'll see. Why are you still here? Bros. I mean, you know what? I'm okay with that. If you're literally just trying to kill off your own divisions, especially the uh, helicopter divisions, I'm totally okay with that. Totally okay with that. Get out of L.A., though. Get out. Oh, that's L.A. down there. Get out of San Francisco. I guess San Francisco is a really big port, huh? I guess it does. 
what are we spending on? 13 million civilian spending just costs so much, man. It's alright, though. Nice. It is not... Oh, it is 69. So, if it's 69, boom, boom. Let's grab some of this, too, because we can. Maybe get some research speed, too, eventually, as well. Um, the copyright approach. We're just going to beeline this. We can come back here and do this later. We might do dealing with unions. We'll see. But the Bennett plan. Senator. Oh, actually, you know what? Senator, 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 Senator. Since we got that done anyways, we'll come down here. Actually, you know what? grab some research speed. We like research speed. Thank you. My apologies about that. But, Senator. Uh, well, Wallace F. Bennett of Utah is a well-respected and popular RD and one of the leading conservative and pro-business members in this current Congress. Senator Bennett has already approached the Secretary of Treasury and Commerce with a bold plan to end trade with Germany, Italy, Iberia, Japan, and their fascist puppets, encourage international trade with similarly aligned partners, and even returning to the gold standard as a way to provide some stability in an America that desperately needs it. While some economists say that both plans could be risky, even dangerous as the country is growing so much faster without the limits of gold and silver, and cutting all ties to some of the largest if undemocratic powers in the world could cause an economic recession. Goldwater is very intrigued with the proposals as, an, as a break from the past. Both of these proposals will clearly show that the U.S. will stand up for what it believes in and not become beholden to the almighty dollar. There goes Sudan. If you're wondering about the World Series, please go right ahead, but revitalizing the economy. Followed up with, oh, whoopsie, I forgot about this. Financial reform. Arguably one of the most fervid conservatives in the sitting American government, Goldwater has a tendency to be a rather brusque and unflinching in advocating his convictions. As such, he will try to push his party aside if it means they will compromise his aims to back small government conservatism. With this in mind, he will meet significant conflict with the liberal wings of his own party, i.e. Nelson Rockefeller, and pushing his idea of a flattened tax rate, a systematic nullification of LBJ-esque subsidies, agriculture being particularly crucial, defaying overly demanding unions, re-examining the Wagner Act and the like for starters, reinstating the volunteerism and union membership, re-delegating the duties of commerce and trade as it is fit back to the states, and rifling through all the other laws of finance Congress has made without mind to the 10th Amendment's prohibitions on do their doing. Revitalizing the Economy and there's one thing that former senator of U uh, not Utah, Arizona, and the current president of the United States is known for. It's his views on government and free market capitalism. Namely that the former should be cut to the bone and then some, and then later should be allowed to run free with next to nothing to hold it back. Some call it libertarian, some call it fiscal conservatism. Barry Goldwater calls it common sense. Ever since the Great Depression, Washington has steadily gained more and more power. At first it was welcoming some work programs... Uh, some make work programs to get the unemployed workers back to work. Then, with the war and the mobilization for it, came the inspectors, support for unions, restrictions, and rationing of resources, all called temporary, all to win the war. But even the war ended in humiliation and defeat. The technocratic, heavy handed bureaucrats and their stalwart allies in Congress doubled down, clinging to their offices and positions, throwing more and more money at every problem. But this only bloated every element of government, ballooned at an already astronomical depth. Business was strangled under the increasing costs and frustration, leaving only those massive corporations with armies of lawyers to just survive and stagnate, becoming monopolies. Unions, too, for what are they? but bloated bureaucracy that only survived to steal money from hard-working Americans. The lazy and workish, work-shy, those that only have enough ambition to gain the system for free money, now get checks from Uncle Sam to spend on booze and prostitutes, rich food and all the luxuries of modern life, all by lying and cheating the average person. The American people become apathetic, weary, and resigned to this nightmare of red tape and thievery, undaring and meek in the front of a monolithic entity of agencies, bureaus, and departments. But no more. Today begins a process of slashing through bloated government. Programs are being reevaluated. Taxes are being slashed. The debt will be erased. Budgets are going to be halved and halved again. Thousands of paper pushers, whose only job it was to stifle everything about America, will be booted out to find some actual work. Those living the high life on scamming the welfare program or squeezing the average man and woman for every dime will now have to be actually find a job and be productive. Restrictions that have held the American economy back for decades will be cut to ribbons. The free market, now revitalized without anything holding it back, will allow everyone to prosper again. The theory sounds good. Let's get... To it. And now, my friends, we are almost done with Bennett's plan, but let's begin and just just go a little crazy. Just a little bit. Consumer goods. Feel the market. Oh, the centers grows a little bit more. International trade. Let's feel the market. We like feeling things here. All the reforms that the Goldwater administration has proposed and put into effect. There's a general feeling of good times and prosperity ahead. However, GDP numbers, Wall Street, nor consumer sentiment has taken off like expected. Maybe there's something else that needs to be done. Something big. Something that will clearly get the U.S. economy not only moving, but blooming. And Goldwater is feeling like the time to make that move is now. And a terrorist attack in Italy. Oh, our condolences, Italy. But it is what it is. A Bennett plan. Senator Wallet F. Bennis, Republican Democrat of Utah, a wealthy businessman and former candidate for president of the U.S. in the last election, has a plan to fix the economy. While he didn't get the chance in 64 to put his plan into motion, now he might get the chance with a conservative like Goldwater in the White House. They had both worked together in the Senate for several years beforehand, and Goldwater liked what he heard from Bennis' speeches and proposals for more international trade and re-establishing the gold standard, however. Goldwater decided against bringing Bennett onto this cabinet as Secretary of the Treasury, instead going for the hardline conservative libertarian Donald Reagan, as he wanted someone he could trust in the Senate to help him get his proposal through, since most of it was Bennett's brainchild so much better. 
By pursuing the twin goals of free trade and global, the gold standard, Goldwater and Bennett have have what they perceive to be a winning strategy, increase prosperity, an end to the economic stagnation of the previous generation, and giving the American people hope for the future now. What shape the free trade would take is still a matter of debate in the halls of power as Goldwater's anti-fascist views mean that increased trade with Germany and Japan would be an abhorrent to him. <clears throat> While concern over the size, wealth, and even political will of the OFN members would mean that they aren't as great as markets as business leaders would like, and restoring a true gold standard can mean either great things if done right or a huge economic crash if they fall. It'll be a tight rope to walk, but Goldwater and Bennett are sure it can be done. Now's your chance, Bennett. Now's your chance. And let's suppress the center, because... When's it not fun to suppress the center? We should always do that. And of course we're doing... Well, we can do stuff in Russia, but I don't really care. Recruit another agent? Why not? Thank you. Because we can. Refuel the market, but international trade... Oh, also, a Supreme Court Justice has died. Um, we had six and three. So, this person was nonpartisan. Oh, okay. Huh. Ah, we can afford another conservative judge, just in case. Monetary reform. You know what? Uh, we're going to international trade next first, so... Uh, no, no, let's do it. monetary reform first. The plan is simple. Pay out the federal debt. There's still bonds and interests and loan payments stretching back to the First World War on the balancing books. If... The government can cut the debt even by a few percentage points. Interest p payments will drop. Taxes can be lowered and more people will have money in their pockets to spend. And giving the average person more money to spend is exactly how you boosted an economy. Nice. International trade. Well, the U.S. is one of the largest economies in the world, and it's virtually every resource within its borders that could ever need. It can't stand alone. In fact, it is imperative that America should trade with the world, especially with an anti-fascist free world. The resources of Canada, South Africa, Australia, and Latin America is worth a pretty penny, and they in turn can purchase products made in factories in the States, which will only require more resources, which results in more money for them to spend on goods made in America. And the cycle will continue on and on, and making everyone richer and happier. President Goldwater will be giving a speech to the American Chamber of Commerce tomorrow to lay out his plans to increase international trade, which should make all the businessmen ha there very happy. Nice. I'm only doing this to get more uh, political power anyways. Reforming the market. Today, President Barry M. Goldwater announced that his administration will be increasing the amount of money paid towards his national debt this upcoming budget year, seeking to reduce the cost and more, grant more flexibility while the economy is doing well. By working towards retiring debt that the federal government has accumulated, some of which goes back over 50 years, we should then be able to lower taxes for everyday Americans, Mr. Goldwater stated in the White House press room. Reducing taxes is... <clears throat> The best way to ensure more hard-earned dollars remain in the pockets of Americans to buy what they need and want. Economists are always saying that people shouldn't be taking on more debt than they can afford, Mr. Goldwater continued. And by God, the federal government has taken on way too much in the past. I will not be the, t be the president to tell future generations that it's going to be their problem. Opposition amongst the left-leaning Republicans within the unified RD party has also been raised. There's talk circulating about around Congress that it is more left-leaning and interventionist members of the president's own party, maybe turning their backs on the White House instead of leaning towards supporting the National Progressive Party, especially the LNPP, which has denounced Mr. Goldwater's plan is short-sighted and prone to failure if free trade doesn't turn out the way its proponents have claimed. It's not as simple as just throwing the money at the national debt and claiming everything is fine, Representative William Don Edwards from California said to the reporters on Capitol Hill after the president spoke, especially since this is being done in a haphazard way, simply because the president's policies on free trade will just make more money in the long run. Until we know for sure, we should be investing in our communities and infrastructure. Right or wrong, at least the numbers are going down. Yay. Even without doing that, like, that's really good. $35 billion? Don't ask how the poverty rate... Actually, it's only 15 to 25%, so not bad. Goldwater's way... Ooh. Uh, we got to go with the gold standard immediately. I'm sorry. For years, the U.S. has been drifting away from the gold standard. During the Great Depression, citizens were forbidden from exchanging the paper currency for bullion. And for a while, there was talk of going away from gold entirely to be replaced with nothing. Goldwater is reversing this trend. And and uh, going to get the U.S. back on the gold standard and allow people to share their bills for hard currency. Laws are already working through Congress to make it happen. The Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve are already preparing for what will need to be done to build up America's gold reserves and to create mechanisms to stabilize prices. If either falls, effort fails, it could be crippling or could cripple the U.S. economy for the long term. Nice. If we not finish stabilizing after implementing the gold standard, the FX oh will be detrimental. Ooh. So basically, we gotta just beeline down here, tear free off and sell. Yeah. Um, finish stabilizing after implementing the gold standard, the effects. Oh, maybe we should wait, actually. You know what? Let's wait. So that we can get all this stuff done first. And then get down here. And then do this. We'll wait for do that one next. I want to wait for the class Senate one elections. Keep America strong and free. Vote R&D. Even though I don't like either party. Uh, let's see. Hmm, it's not looking good for us, huh? East Coast might be good. East Coast. Let's do East Coast. Let's do East Coast. We could probably close out of this one too. So, good. 
international trade, gold waters way, grows further divided. American democracy has no need to trade with the fascists of the world. The right choice, goods from just partners. We don't make deals with fascists. Huh, we'll no longer be allowed to trade with ultranationalists, fascists, national socialists, or Burgundian system nations. Or the party line, our popularity decreases a bit. Money is money and trade is trade no matter who, which country it comes from. You know what? Here, let me know. Let me know. Should we do Goldwater's way? Or should we do the party line? Let me know in the comments below. But I think I'll end the episode here. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I will see you tomorrow as we will decide whether we do Goldwater's way or the party line. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.